The U.S. is surpassing an average of 160,000 daily COVID-19 cases as the highly contagious Delta variant continues to spread ahead of Labor Day weekend. The CDC is now urging 80 million unvaccinated Americans not to travel in the coming days. This comes as COVID patients overwhelm hospitals and intensive care units. Five southern states report having less than 10 percent of ICU beds available. Meanwhile, Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf announced a new mask mandate yesterday. K through 12 schools in the state will now be required to enforce mask wearing a reversal from his initial stance of leaving the decision up to school districts and in Florida. They are now withholding funds from schools that defied Republican Governor Ron DeSantis' ban on mask mandates so far. The Florida Department of Education has withheld funds from two school districts. The department says penalties will continue until school boards comply with the state. This comes after a judge ruled against the governor's ban on mask mandates. With more on this, Dr. Leslie Diaz joins us. She's an infectious disease specialist at Jupiter Medical Center. Dr. Diaz, thanks so much for being with us. So what do you make of what's happening in Florida with the governor's ban on mask mandates in schools, considering Florida is experiencing one of the worst COVID outbreaks in the country? Uh, thank you very much for having me and good morning, everyone. Um, you know, I, I really hate to get into the political uh, situations and uh, mandates and so forth. I can tell you what the science is. And the science says that masks uh, saves lives uh, and it reduces the uh, transmission of COVID-19. And that's a very powerful statement. We should utilize these tools that we have to be able to mitigate the chaos that we are experiencing in the state. Um, if somebody does uh, does not want to acknowledge that, that is to, you know, that's their prerogative, but the science is there. Masks work and we should utilize them, especially in the, um, uh, in, in the school district and in the schools that are inundated now with all the kids coming back and not, not uh, doing virtual learning. Um, so I think it's important to keep this, uh, these kids safe and the safety of kids should be our priority. Doctor, you talk about the science when it comes to masks. There's a new study by uh, Stanford University School of Medicine and Yale University uh, suggesting, in fact, what you just said, that masks actually prevent uh, COVID. It looked at roughly 350,000 people in Bangladesh. So uh, this is what I want to ask you. I, I feel, and I don't know, Vlad, if you've noticed this, uh, doctor, if you've noticed this, that the, people have kind of been a little more lax with mask wearing. I think there's a lot of confusion now uh, because we went through that period where, you know, people were getting vaccinated and it seemed like we didn't really need to wear our masks, uh, particularly outside, too, um, where there was just confusion. Even now I go to stores, doctor, and that sign for wearing your mask indoors is still up but it's weathered and faded. And I go into a store and some people have a mask on and some people don't have a mask on. Can you just sort of tell us right now, even though there are many people who are vaccinated, why is it still important to wear your mask and under, under what circumstances? Uh, yes, Emery, I, you know, I began to, uh, to say that when there was a lull in the numbers of cases of COVID-19, especially here in the state back in June, uh, I have to admit, people got laxed. Uh, they weren't wearing masks. Um, they took all the mandates away and they kind of hung on to that. Uh, and then July came. July came and I saw it coming. The, uh, the wave that we're going through is awful. Um, uh, we're in a crisis, uh, whether you, know, you want to really acknowledge it or not. The, the reality is there every day of my life. Uh, so I can't uh, dismiss it. So wearing masks has become very lax uh, behavior around here and around the, the United States. Uh, it shouldn't be. Uh, I think that uh, we need to acknowledge the fact that we are in a crisis and that we are in, uh, in, in, in a situation that are, ex you know, uh, many numbers of patients that are coming into the hospitals uh, and therefore, we need to take um, a step forward to mitigate this by wearing masks. We know for a fact that masks works. Like I said, the science is there, and we need to utilize that. 
Uh, the statements that I hear that masks don't work, that there's controversial about masks, and that uh, why are they going to wear masks if it doesn't work, etc. Uh, that's just not true. Those are all lies, and you need to go with the science. We need to start wearing masks, and that lackadaisical uh, behavior that we have must stop. Uh, and we need to take charge in uh, wearing masks again and uh, indoors. Outdoors, if you are in close proximity to someone, etc. So let's talk about what's going on in California, where San Diego County has become the first in the nation to declare COVID-19 misinformation a public health crisis. Um, you know, this is something that maybe a lot of people will have opinions on, but you were just talking about some of the mis misinformation that people are exposed to. Um, could we see a world where there's more responsibility and pressure put on lawmakers and state officials to at least reject false science or fake science or science that is or actually we shouldn't even it's not fake um, it's just wrong I mean that is what we're talking about here information that is just wrong uh, Vladimir blatantly speaking they're lies mm. um, that's the best way I can put it um, I can't sugarcoat it any other way um, this misinformation that's going on in Facebook, I call it Facebook medicine, it's just wrong. They're lies. They should not be uh, listened to. People have to understand that we go through school 13 years of my life, plus the, the exams that we have to take, plus the training. Um, all of that has to count for something, let alone the 30 years of experience that I've been doing this with. So. I think that I am an expert and I can say with great certainty things that I have experienced and read. And that's what people should listen to. So definitely this crisis that you're talking about, it's real. And, I, um, and I've acknowledged that way from the beginning where patients were just listening to the brother of the sister of the aunt or the, um, uh, the, the guru or the uh, pastor or the um, you know, people in their lives that are influential, uh, instead of listening to the doctors, the scientists, the virologists that have spent all of their life dealing with viruses and studying them, studying epidemics, et cetera. We need to listen to these people because this is a reality that's in our face. It's playing out like a movie. You know, the script is what they say, and what we're doing right now and what we're experiencing is the movie. So that's what's happening, and we need to pay attention. And, Doctor, of course, the, the longer this pandemic goes on, the more opportunity for the virus to evolve and change. Um, you know, we heard this week that in South Africa, they may have identified another variant. They're trying to determine whether or not, you know, it's more contagious or, or not. They haven't actually given it an official name yet. Can you just sort of remind people about, you know, how a, an infectious disease, how a virus evolves and changes, and, you know, the direct connection to being vaccinated and halting that evolution. Um, yes, uh, you know the um, the the way that virology works or viruses work is that uh, it's a microorganism that is constantly changing, like every other organism, and it changes by mutating um, uh, uh, its composition of genetic makeup. Um, by doing that, it codes for different proteins in its composition that may make it more um, resi resilient, viable, uh, infectious, uh, and, and when I say resistance, I'm talking about vaccine resistance and medication resistance. Um, this is the natural progress of uh, every microorganism, uh, and we can't stop that. But what we can do is we can prevent the transmission of this microorganism from person to person. We know that this Delta variant is a very transmissible virus. So therefore, other viruses that are going to mutate, change their, genet their genome and their genetic composition will eventually become even more transmissible or more resistant to vaccines. So this is the time and the opportunity that we have 
to be able to stop that from occurring, uh, meaning transmission of the virus that is more fit. So the fitness of the virus is like uh, working out and uh, doing exercises every day. Somebody is going to have a very toned body uh, when they do that. Same concept for the virus. So therefore, we need to um, recognize this so we can vaccinate and stop the spread. Uh, the virus cannot mutate and cannot change if it cannot spread. So that concept has to be understood. Um, Dr. Leslie Diaz, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.